What is going on guys? This is Daniel and here we are in the conference finals and the zone defense is playing a crucial role in the Celtics Heat series. So let's get right to this chess match between Eric Spolstra and Brad Stevens. The Heat used the zone the most and let's first talk about why their zone works. So here we see they have two guards at the top and three players down low, a basic 2-3. They have their center in the middle, and this is a bit different, they have their two forwards out on top, and this is a way to get more athleticism and length on the perimeter, and it's also a way for them to hide their guards in the corners, and here Butler gets a steal out on top. They created the turnover here, and on this play, as Hayward flashes to the high post, notice how Butler's length makes this pass tougher, and also, Hero does a nice job of coming over and we can begin to see how their zone defense works as they're active with their high hands. And this is also a big reason why they put Crowder and Butler out on top, because those two are their better individual defenders, and an ISO is most likely to come from the top, and so by keeping Hero and Robinson near the corners, they're less likely to be attacked in an ISO or dribble drive setting. And it's not just Crowder and Butler, they also have Derek Jones Jr. off the bench who plays near the top and he can make an impact with his length and ability to help and recover and get deflections. So the zone allows the coaches to hide certain defenders and also keep the good defenders where they're most effective and the zone allows Bam to stay near the paint and impact the game with his rim protection. Now keep in mind, the Heat ran the zone more than any team this NBA season, and so they're pretty accustomed to rotating and helping in the zone, and that's shown up in this series. For example here, the Celtics set a ball screen, and what they're trying to do is create a two-on-one on the right side. But Duncan Robinson will stunt at the wing, and this is something they emphasize, and then he'll recover to the corner, not allowing the corner three. And while the baseline drive can be dangerous, Crowder does a good job here of rotating low. They operate on a string. Here, Hero stunts at the wing, and this buys Derek Jones enough time to recover and get in front of the ball. And then we see they're very active, and this is something that certainly pops out. And this was a terrific play which shows their communication. So Boston looks to run some kind of overload with Tatum and Kemba going towards the left side of the court. And watch how Jay Crowder sniffs this out, calls out the overload, and then he'll push Butler to the right side and Crowder will take the ball. So now, on the pass to Kemba, Butler is already there on the wing and he can take the ball, allowing Robinson to stay in the corner. Really good job by Crowder. Also, one of the negatives of a zone defense is it can allow three-pointers, but the Heat do a really good job of contesting. So here the Celtics work a nice inside out and Kemba gets a three, but Jones does get a hand up. And one of the main reasons the Heat Zone has been effective is because it's taken Boston out of their normal rhythm and what they typically like to do. So here we have three minutes in a close game, this is game two, and the Celtics just have no idea what they're doing on offense. Poor spacing on that drive, poor spacing in the corner, and this is a really bad offensive possession. Also, the Heat have had some mild success with their full court press, so off of a dead ball or a free throw, what they'll often do is go to a 2-2-1 full court soft press, and we can see here, while this is the perfect time to trap in the corner, they're not looking to trap, Hero retreats, they're just trying to take precious seconds off the shot clock before they backpedal into their zone. Moving on, and the Celtics did have more success against the zone in Game 3, so let's look at some adjustments they made. And one thing they did a lot better was play with more pace. So here, we see the Heat are in their 2-3 zone, and there's 20 seconds on the shot clock, but the Celtics are already setting that ball screen, something they did a ton of in Game 2, but with more pace here, Jones gets stuck on the screen, and that frees up Kemba. They were also more comfortable and decisive in the half court. So here, Smart swings it over to Brown, and look how he runs into that catch to attack the closeout. Now, he's able to pierce the defense, but give the Heat credit, they do a nice job of scrambling around and forcing a floater. But also, one of the weaknesses of a zone is it can be vulnerable on the offensive glass, and in Game 3, Boston got on the glass more.
And also, in Game 2, they just didn't really do a good job of utilizing the high post. But in Game 3, we saw many more flashes. And here we see Brown, a wing, has the freedom to flash to the high post. And here, while he doesn't get the pass, then he can go back to the perimeter and attack off the dribble. Definite, 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 definite. And Brad Stevens also dialed up some clever set plays. So here's one where Tatum runs across the lane, and now what he's doing is occupying Drogic on that right side. And Brown will set a screen on Bam, and they're trying to free up Grant Williams in that short corner. And while the play isn't executed perfectly, it works as Williams gets a layup. Good job screening the zone. Let's look at the numbers. The Celtics offense versus man defense in the half court this series is scoring 1.10 points per possession. And versus zone defense in the half court, they're scoring 1.05, so slightly worse. And the Heat have played zone on about 24% of half court possessions. So it'll be interesting to see how this dynamic plays out going forward. And so far, the Heat zone has been pretty effective. Now, while it hasn't gotten the same amount of attention, Arguably, the Celtic zone is just as interesting. And first, some background. So in Game 1, the Heat killed the Celtics on this inbounds play. Butler inbounds the ball, then he gets a bit of a flex screen from Drogic, and they're picking on Kemba here. And here, when the Celtics switch the screen, the Heat can go inside and Butler can score. Later in the game, the Heat run this play again, this time with Crowder screening as they're targeting Kemba. And here, the Celtics don't switch and collapse on Butler, and that leaves Crowder open. So heading into Game 2, I was curious to see how Brad Stevens would adjust, how they would hide Kemba on the sideline out of bounds so Butler can't pick on him. And their answer was to go to a 2-3 zone. And here, it works perfectly. The Heat are setting up their play where Drogic sets a bit of a flex screen for Butler, but the zone takes them out of it, and the Celtics get a stop. The Celtics have been running their zone almost exclusively on sideline out of bounds, and here Smart raises two fists in the air to signal that they're in the zone, and it effectively takes the Heat out of their initial sideline out of bounds play, but give the Heat credit, they hit the short corner and get a good shot. What's also interesting is that the Celtics still want to use the zone as little as possible. So here for instance, both Walker and Butler are off the court, and those two players especially are the reason that the Celtics went to a zone in the first place. So here we see they go to man with those two off the court, Tice is up on Adebayo, and now when the Heat try to run that play, it doesn't stress the Celtics. They can switch it with Smart and Jalen Brown and contain the play. What's also interesting is that at least a few times, they've quickly transitioned back to man. So here Butler is taking it out, and the Celtics are pretty clearly in zone to start with, but then as the ball is inbounded, they seem to revert to man defense. Tice is up on Adebayo, Tatum looks like he's in man versus Butler, and so the zone was just for two seconds, and then they're back in man. Overall, I would say this zone look has fared alright for the Celtics, but alright is definitely a big improvement from what we saw in Game 1, where they were giving up easy points on sideline out of bounds. And the zone defense is definitely having a moment. In 17-18 during the regular season, only two teams used over 100 zone possessions according to Second Spectrum, but in 18-19 that rose to 10 teams. And in this year, the 19-20 season, that rose to 16 teams and it would have been more if not for the shortened season. And I expect the zone defense to continue to rise. Offenses are getting more and more dynamic and also the zone gives up three pointers but we saw this year a lot of the best defenses such as the Raptors and the Bucks gave up a lot of threes anyways so it's no longer a bad thing to give up a high volume of three pointers and that's probably played a role in the rise of the zone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.